You're on Vision Christian Radio. It's Neil with you, the Friday edition of 2020. Shortly, we'll open our talkback lines. You might have your own perception of what's going on. You might have your own question, a comment. You might even have a critique for our conversation. Shortly, we'll open our talkback lines. Uh, From time to time, we have been able to highlight uh, our Australian movement towards a digital surveillance system that threatens our privacy and our freedoms. The Albanese government announced in September it would be moving forward with drafting a digital identity bill with only a small window of time for consultation. We're talking today about the next level of what may be a threat to our privacy and to our freedoms. Our special guest is former federal politician George Christensen, who says a digital identity system carries extreme risks for Australians. In life after Parliament, as a Liberal National MP, George Christensen has emerged as a commentator on the challenges facing the West. He's now Australian Campaign Director for Citizen Go. That's an independent, non-profit, grassroots organisation that works to ensure that the views and values of everyday pro-life and pro-family people inform global and national decision-making. George is unashamedly conservative, a blogger, a podcaster, a journalist, and even has a degree in Christian theology. He's never been shy to have his Christian values shape his public persona, and he's not holding back in his commentary blog that's called Nation First. Uh, George Christensen, a special welcome back to 2020. Well, thank you very much, Neil. It's always great to be on Vision FM and uh, your show 2020 in particular. You do a world of good, and thank you very much for doing it. Uh, George, let me start with uh, what the government is saying in describing this bill. And uh, I think I'm quoting uh, Minister Katie Gallagher here, who says, Importantly, digital ID is not a card. It's not a unique number, nor a new form of ID. It's just an easy way of verifying who you are online against existing government-held identity documents without having to hand over any physical information. And that sort of thing makes it sound quite innocent. Uh, You've got a view here that actually says some of these things are quite sinister. Uh, Give us your impression of what the government's proposing. Well, Neil, for people who uh, have a bit of grey hair or maybe have uh, uh, hair that's not in places where it once was, you know, the reality is we remember something called the Australia card. And, and and this makes the Australia card look like a walk uh, in the park, mate. It really, really does. Now, the Australia card, for those uh, who don't have growing hair like me or who uh, whose hair is still on their head, you know, that they, they probably don't recall it. The Australia card was this idea that a previous Labor government had. I think it was the Hawke Labor government, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Neil, that... Um, They wanted to have a central identity card that would be the identity card for everything, for everything. It it would basically replace the idea of using your license as your ID. Uh, You would use it for a whole host of government services. Now, this is the same thing. Uh, And and we railed against it back in the 80s when they proposed the centralised identity that was going to be a card. Now, there's something to be said that that actually having a card that you can keep in your pocket um, is actually less intrusive and less invasive of your privacy than the idea of some digitised identity system. Uh, A digitised identity system, Neil, uh, there is a lot of hairs on it, a lot of hairs, because the government's talking about um, the, the rationale behind doing this is that there have been a lot of identity breaches um, there have been a lot of hacks where people have had their uh, uh, their so-called digital identities, of which, you know, we're just talking about your login credentials to some service, whether it be private or public, uh, that it's been stolen by someone else. And this newfangled national digital ID system, this trusted identity system, as they're also calling it, is going to fix that. My question is, straight up, Neil, without going down any rabbit hole here, is that, pray tell, what is going to make this national identity system better than any other existing system which has been hacked? 
And there have been government institutions, not just in Australia, all around the world that have been hacked. If you're going to centralise all points of information about Neil Johnson or uh, any of our dear listeners out there, um, myself, anyone else for that matter, how is this not like the honeypot uh, to the bees for uh, cyber hackers and that those that want to actually commit wide-scale identity theft? Uh, I, I just think this is a disaster waiting to happen. And that's before I even start going in down any rabbit holes. And there's a lot to go down, Neil. <laughs> well, George, uh, I know that the on the upside, uh, there's the thought of streamlining all the activities that you might do in your day-to-day life, uh, making life easier. And, of course, then there's always... Uh, the argument that this is for your safety. Uh, There are different ways of arguing that there are some good things here. As you identify, though, there's, uh, you know, there are scammers, there are identity thieves. Um, uh, Trust and identity uh, might be one thing we could think about, but there are always ways that someone's trying to subvert the system. But uh, in a Mm. sense, the government's trying to streamline things and make life easier and make sure that everyone could be accounted for. But, of course, there are dangers in that, too. Mm, yeah, there are. And look, I, I, I think that that, uh, look, I, I, I don't want to ascribe um, nefarious motives to uh, Senator Katie Gallagher. I'm sure she's being genuine when she says uh, that she believes in this as some sort of push to uh, make it easier. But really, now, I mean, how difficult is it for anyone who is switched on with technology to actually log into a system? Um, I mean, we all forget our passwords. This is not going to negate the uh, need for passwords, Neil. Um, you're still going to have to remember that. So so it's not going to make life easier at all, really. Um, uh, it is just going to add an extra level of complexity to a system that, for some people, is actually already complex when you have to navigate the internet. And there is another point, Neil, again, without going down any of the rabbit holes that uh, surround this issue, um, what about those who aren't tech savvy? What about those who actually um, don't access the internet? And of course, the government says right now, well, we're going to make provisions for those people. There are going to be other ways that they can do things, that this is just going to be an option, this digital identity system. We've all heard that before. Uh, And then suddenly all the government departments start pushing people down this road and, 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 and and the other avenues start getting narrower and narrower and narrower it actually then will work in reverse. It's not going to be something that helps people. For those who are on the edge, who are on the margins, and we're talking about people who are elderly, who haven't got the hang of the internet, we're talking about people who are poor that actually don't have access to the internet, they're gonna be squeezed out. And that's the most vulnerable people in our community. So again, I've got grave concerns about all of that, but let me get to the the nub here now this is without a doubt a privacy invasion it really really is let me read you the headline from the daily mail uh on this this is how they summed it up in their headline national digital id how the government plans to keep track of every citizen with a universal id linking everything from medicare to your driver's license now if that doesn't worry you, I don't know what does. And and it's not just headlines from tabloid groups. Um, we have had, uh, you know, and, and again, it's not a right-wing conspiracy theory either because there's been very left-wing groups like um, Civil Liberty Associations, uh, say in Victoria, uh, that have come out with grave concerns about it. ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, which is a very, very leftist uh, organisation, has uh, pointed out that these digital ID systems could be uh, what they call, quote unquote, a privacy nightmare. Um, This is what they say about it. Such a system could could make it so easy to ask for people's IDs that these demands proliferate until we're automatically sharing our our ID at every turn, including online. And and the concern with that is, what's attached to the ID? What what data is going to be attached to it? What is going to be known by the end, by by, by the recipient 
of, of our IDs. Uh, uh, I don't know. That hasn't really been explained to the public. Of course, you might say, if I have nothing to hide, I wouldn't be afraid of my details being in the hands of people who might be uh, the authorities that oversee uh, the nation and they're in for in my, in my overseeing my life. But the, the interesting thing here, George, that I'm interested in and, uh, you know, cutting through that left and right uh, uh, divide. Uh, people on the left have as much to hide as people on the right. Uh, so you wouldn't imagine that anyone, uh, no matter what side of politics or what ideological position you might hold to, that you might think that this is a good thing. So, And yet uh, you've got the government pushing forward with this. Uh, it can't actually be a benefit either to people who are on the left as, as much as people on the right. You're, you're correct now. And, um, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, really base stuff like you lingered on an inappropriate website for five seconds. You know, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about here is uh, what views you might have shared on the internet about political issues, ideological issues, philosophical issues. Uh, does it does it pass the government's test? Does it pass the cultural zeitgeist? I mean, it is not a stretch of the imagination to think with all of the technologies that are building up, if we have a national identity system, that um, things that we do online could somehow be linked to this digital ID and then known to third parties that have access to it. And let me tell you something now, the government has already flagged that this is not going to just be used for public services. They have already flagged that in the future, they they well and truly intend for private corporations to come on board the system. And the banks are rubbing their hands together about it. The banks want access to it. The banks want to know everything about us. Um, and guess what? There's already instances in Australia and around the world of banks that are actually debanking people, kicking them out as customers because they don't agree with what they've said politically online. Yes, this has got to be of concern to all of us. It is certainly a grounds uh, that so many can use in what we're all becoming very familiar with as a cancel culture. And so privacy issues do matter. And and uh, we're going to take a short break here and come back and continue to talk because I want to ask you about uh, Christians and privacy and freedoms because there is some concern, of course, that if Christians move as has happened in some nations around the world, uh, even become labelled as being subversive, uh, then you could be on that cancelling end if Without there are those who understand that you have a different way of seeing the world. And as we've been saying, some people might think this is like some form of conspiracy theory we're talking about when it comes to digital ID and the way that the federal government is moving towards some sort of a digital ID and the preparation of a bill to introduce to the parliament that may happen soon. Our special guest is former federal politician George Christensen. Our talkback line is open on 1-800-316-316. George, of course, uh, what moves governments to legislate uh, might actually come with uh, even good motivations, uh, sensible things you might even say could be making life easier. However, you combine that with a mix of new technologies and link that to a digital ID system and you get the person with a wrong motive then comes to power and that leads to the possibility of control. Uh, give us your insights here that if you don't nip these things in the bud early, when it's out of control, it's too hard to get the genie back in the bottle. Indeed, indeed. And, and, and look, uh, it's a concern because the development of emerging technologies that could go hand in hand with any nationalized centralized digital identity system and and that's of concern particularly to christians and i'll explain that in a moment but i want to refer to brett solomon who's the executive director of a non-government organization an international organization called access now that is set up to defend and extend the digital rights as in the online rights of people all around the world and here is what he says he says, I am convinced that digital ID writ large poses one of the gravest risks to human rights of any technology we have encountered. 
Worse, we are rushing headlong into a future where new technologies will converge to make this risk much more severe. Now, listen to this now. He says, for starters, we are building near-perfect facial recognition technology and other identifiers from the human gait to breath to iris. Biometric databases are being set up in such a way that these individual identifiers are centralised, insecure and opaque. There is a capacity for geolocation of identifiers, that is, the tracking of the digital you in real time. A constant feed of insecure data from the Internet of Things may well connect you and your identity to other identities and nodes on the network without your consent. In addition, systems using AI and machine learning are used to make decisions based on our identities. These systems are often built on data that can reinforce bias and discrimination and are wielded without sufficient transparency or human review. And this is the clincher here now. He says, ultimately, social credit systems, such as those that are currently being developed in China, will be based on digital ID, thereby enabling or disabling our full and free participation in society. By developing these technologies in parallel with systems for a digital ID, we are not simply establishing an identity to access basic social services. Digital IDs will become necessary to function in a connected digital world. Now, listen to this. This has not escaped the attention of authoritarian regimes. Already, they are working to splinter the internet, collect and localise data, and impose regimes of surveillance and control. Digital ID systems, as they are being developed today, are ripe for exploitation and abuse to the detriment of our freedoms and democracies. Now, that is a quote that I've just read direct from a guy, Brett Solomon, who heads up uh, a global organisation that is about defending the digital rights of people all around the world. He is terrified about digital ID. Now, as Christians, we know that the current zeitgeist uh, and, and the current policies, particularly of Western governments, are going well against our views. Uh, in fact, Neil, they're not just going away from them, they are now almost in opposition to what we stand for. Um, we have the United Nations, for instance, uh, of which we're a party in Australia, that came out with a document only a month ago that actually said that the rights of people of faith are contrary and subservient uh, or subordinate uh, to the rights of LGBTIQ alphabet soup people, you know. So so this is the zeitgeist that we're working under. A and, and my concern is when you have all of these streams of information, all of this data coming into a central point and feeding into your digital ID, when we've got biometric uh, surveillance, uh, biometric surveillance that that actually is connected to digital id the government's already said that there's going to be biometrics involved in that so facial scanning retina scanning that sort of thing will be connected to digital id when you've got that when you've got geolocation online tracking this is dangerous now i don't know how anyone can't see that that maybe not right now but certainly give it 10 years into the future uh, we will have a level of control over what we do, what we access, what we say online, and not just online. As this guy, Brett Solomon, talked about the Internet of Things, everything's being connected. you got your little Alexa in the corner over there that's listening to you or your, your Google, um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, little... You know, chat little, GPT. Um, and, yeah, uh, yes, or, yeah. or, and, and people have got just household appliances, TVs, fridges, ovens, all the rest connected to it. Are they listening to us? Um, and you think, oh, that's crazy talk, George. Apart from the fact that people like Edward Snowden, who actually had to flee America because he exposed stuff, uh, did actually say that, that, that there was information he had from his time working as a uh, for the national security apparatus in the US that even at, at smart TVs were listening to people's conversations and feeding that through to the national security apparatus in the US. So, so information is coming from everywhere. And this is my concern about digital ID. It just makes this, the whole thing 
so much more worse because it makes it easier for governments, particularly governments with an authoritarian cue who want to clamp down on a section of the public. It makes it easier for them to do that clamp down. We're only a couple of minutes from news. Let's squeeze in if we can a call. Richard is in Alstonville in New South Wales. Hi, Richard. Need to be quick. What are your thoughts? Um, I have one or two questions. First, first one is um, the QR, the QR can- scanning um, codes or whatever, or the the the, the mm-hmm. interface we that were brought in just before COVID that we used as as a massive place in COVID is that a um, a system of the future where they use to scan information and. Um, store data. Uh, Richard, a very quick response here. What are your thoughts around that, George? Well, I think that um, it it could be used like that. Uh, I mean, we were told that all of this information was going to simply go off systems, that it wouldn't be used for anywhere else. And then we suddenly found that police were actually using it in certain states. Um, So there there it goes. Uh, We can be told as many things and given as many provisos and and, and notions of protection as possible, but it still ends up being misused. And that's by government. How we if this is going to fall into the hands of private corporations, how is it not going to be misused? Uh, Richard, just very quickly, you said something. A second question. Yeah, the other question I had is with. Say with China um, bumping up their surveillance and countries like Russia, and you you hear about it quite a lot. Is is something you, you talk about um, facial recognition and all this technology? Is this something that they could possibly have a referendum on in the future? to ask all Australians, or do you think they would just legislate it? Well, let's hold off on an answer because we've got to go to news. Um, Richard, I'm going to say thank you very much. Uh, We might talk about that referendum issue after news. George Christensen's our guest. Our talkback line open, 1-800-316-316. We're breaking for news and back to continue this conversation after Vision National News. Wonderful to have you with us on this Friday edition of 2020. If you are just joining us, you're joining into a an important conversation, I think, uh, because we're talking about digital ID and the potential for digital surveillance uh, threatening our privacy and our freedoms. The Albanese government announced in September it would be moving forward with drafting a digital identity bill with only a small window of time for consultation. We're talking today about the next level of threat to privacy and freedoms with special guest, former federal politician George Christensen, who says digital identity systems carry extreme risks for Australians. These days, George is Australian campaign director for Citizen Go. He's unashamedly conservative, a blogger, a podcaster, journalist, and even has a degree in Christian theology. His commentary blog is called Nation First. Our talkback line is open on 1-800-316-316. You might have your own two bobs worth to contribute to our conversation today. It might be a question. It might be a comment. It might be something you have observed and it might be even a critique for our conversation. 1-800-316-316. George, do you want to come back to what listener Richard mentioned just before the news. We didn't get time for a response to it, but he said something very important. He said, well, if a digital ID system is to be imposed on all Australians, uh, would the government, I think, you know, paraphrasing Richard's words, would the government be uh, courageous enough to actually put that to the people in a referendum? Uh, What are your thoughts about whether we've got a choice at all in this? Well, there's uh, two answers here. One, the government should ask the people whether they want such a momentous shift in terms of uh, our privacy and in terms of government control, Uh, but they won't. And here's the reason, Neil. This is not about us. Uh, Whoever asked for a digital identity system in Australia? I mean, Neil, Did you wake up in the middle of the night worried ever that you didn't have a digital identity? Uh, Do you think that any of your listeners has ever written to or phoned or emailed their member of parliament asking them, uh, could you please give me a digital identity? Um, You know, have you ever been stopped in the street by someone and asked, Neil, uh, are you worried about uh, not having a digital identity? I mean, this hasn't come from the Australian people. 
This really hasn't come from the Australian people. And so there's a real big question mark over what is the democratic value behind this proposition? I mean, we're supposed to be a representative democracy where the elected government of the day, in fact, all parliamentarians, are supposed to represent our views, our wishes and our wants. Well, this isn't a wish or a want from the Australian public. Where does it then emanate from? Well, I can tell you where it emanates from, Neil. Since about 2015, there have been globalist forces such as the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, uh, more recently, the World Health Organization, that have been talking about the need for a globally connected digital identity framework. Now, that is going to be really scary. You know, we're not now just talking about the Australian government, state governments, maybe local governments, maybe Australian banks and big corporations like Telstra and Optus in Australia having access to this digital identity system. We're talking about governments and multinational corporations all around the world potentially having access to your personal data, to your private information. Who the hell wants that? Who voted for that? Okay. Hey, we're taking calls. 1-800-316-316. Let's take a call from Chris in Melbourne. Hello, Chris. Welcome along. Uh, good day, Neil and George. Yeah, I, I just want to get George's opinion. Don't you think it's hysterical that they're having a huge AI conference in Bletchley Park at the moment in England? Uh, uh, you know, the dangers of AI when they can't, mm. like you said, see the dangers of digital identity. Everyone seems to hate China, and they know what's happened in China, but yet they keep to keep on going after this. Uh, yeah, I just find it hysterical. And anyway, I, I think if you're a betting man, Prince Charles has uh, got uh, front running in the 666 stakes. So I just like your opinion on that. Yeah. <laughs> now we're getting into conspiracies. Uh, George, your <laughs> thoughts for Chris? Uh, well, look, I'll leave uh, uh, oh, King Charles alone. He's got some views that I find a little bit uh, strange on certain things, but uh, nonetheless, he's the king. That's a figurehead uh, rather than anyone with uh, uh, that actually wields um, uh, practical power. My concern more is of the people that we elect and the kind of things that they want, like this digital identity agenda. And 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 you're right. I mean, here we have the name. We're going to corral governments are actually wanting to force more of our information actually have digital systems that uh, verify who we are and without a doubt i mean as ai continues to grow the system will be interconnected some way how it's going to be interconnected i don't know yet um you know that is the future but we have to prepare for that and 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 the number one thing I say is that don't digitise their identity and therefore we don't fall into any trap here. Um, you know, I, I think that you're on the money, that that uh, there is a concern uh, about all of this technology. Um, but the problem is we've got governments that are just embracing it without thinking of future repercussions beyond their life. Um, and, and it's got to be of concern to all of us. Chris in Melbourne, thank you so much for your call. 1-800-316-316 to join in our conversation. We'll take another call in just a moment. But one listener called through. His name is Dirk. Dirk called in from Gemaling. He works in IT and said that everything we do in the digital space is logged and the data, once in the hands of government, will be used by them against us. Even mm -hmm. social media organisations such as Facebook admit they have the power to influence society to determine the outcomes of elections and to change the social views of the public through the power Correct. of their platforms. A perfect example is the anti-Israel bias in the media and other major social issues in recent years. So yes, the power to influence, and because we know that social media can be targeting uh, their uh, advertising and uh, influence. Uh, thoughts here for uh, for Dirk, who called in with that note? Well, I'm very glad that Dirk did call in with that note because uh, working in that sector, he knows what can happen. And, uh, you know, I've got to say that social media is the great example of how 
centralizing all our data. And sadly, we've all done that. We've all done that willingly because um, the product with Facebook, for instance, is, you know, we don't purchase our Facebook account. The product is us and all of our data. So I think that you need a new mattress and suddenly you start seeing ads on Facebook for new mattresses. Um, and, and, and that's what happens here. And, you know, uh, here's a question around our digital identity system. Since we're talking about uh, in the future corporations becoming involved, is my digital identity and everything, every uh, data point that's connected to that digital identity of mine going to be sold to someone? Is it going to be, is government going to sell this to banks or sell this to multinational corporations? And once they have access to it, what protections are going to be in place to stop them from on selling our digital identity to other people? I don't understand because there's not enough information. And even if government right now told me that was never, ever going to happen, be rubbish because you are not forever. Has change. Patient Neil, things that we were told would never, ever change with that, but down the months always change the rules. Change the rules with digital ID as well. Okay, taking calls 1 800 316 316. Let's hear from Brett in Western Australia. Hey, Brett, welcome. Hi, Neil, how are you going? Very well. Um, just a question. Um, maybe we need to go back to the drawing board in regards to who our government is. Is our government a legitimate government or is it actually a corporate entity in itself? All right. I think this could be bordering on a conspiracy theory too. <laughs> you know, is the government a legitimate government? Uh, George Christensen, what are your thoughts here for Brett? Well, uh Conspiracy theorists, Neil, as they say these days, that uh, you know that they're to the uh, mainstream media, and a day in six months' time is the news. Uh, look, uh, yeah, it is true that actually the Australian government is a registered corp states, and uh, but it is of every government around the world that actually wants to trade. So I, I think that look at at this and say oh well um, legitimacy government but i don't know that that helps much legitimacy comes uh will and the collective public will is government that's you know i think that's just so uh, i don't know that it so much to dwell these issues um really is like the digital identity system of the Albanese Labor, Labor government legitimate because part of any mandate and woke up at the night sweating that they didn't have so it's not dem George just to, just to cut in here uh, breaking up a little bit uh, with the audio there it might be where you're sitting in relation to oh, the sorry. microphone if we just uh, I'm not sure what the the issue is there but um, I'll thank Brett for his call. Uh, our talkback line is open on one 316 to join in our conversation as we talk about digital ID. Uh, let's take another call. Steve is in Albany in WA. Hey, Steve, welcome along. Thank you. How are you? Good. Steve, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I'm a born-again Christian, have been for about years now, and um, I've been for quite a while and um, when you talk about this digital and stuff you, know, you have to look at to what's going on over in lots of parts of Europe like in Sweden, Switzerland and all those places where they now have this uh, trackable RFID monitoring. and so this digital ID they can actually track you and all your information on the digital ID board or your medical record or anything, put it onto the chip and that's implanted in your body. And so this microchip, so it has a tiny little lithium battery in it and that is charged by the rise and fall of your body temperature. So it's, it's constantly in your head and it um, puts out a, 
a signal so that they can track you anywhere on the planet 24-7. Steve, you're making a really good point, and of course, uh, for a lot of Christians, uh, been looking at these sorts of things for decades, uh, even aligning <laughs> some of these sorts of things with what we might read in the Bible. And uh, people often like to make alignments with some of these sorts of technologies around this, you know, six six six, the number of the beast, and uh, looking at those sorts of things. Uh, but uh, tracking uh, digital ID, even eventual implants. Uh, numbers uh, thoughts here from you george yeah look uh, steve is right um i hope the audio is working now neil but the steve is right uh there are things going on in other parts of the world particularly uh sweden switzerland uh, areas like that he's talking about where people are actually putting chips in themselves uh, voluntarily um and this is being used as an ID system. It's being used to track people. Uh, I read out that quote before from Brett Solomon, who is head of that NGO that's about defending digital rights of uh, people across the world. And he said this, that, that, that you know, there's going to be a convergence of all of this technology. Uh, we've got facial recognition surveillance going on. We've got uh, ways that we can do geolocation in real time uh, because of that biometric surveillance, but also uh, tracking you online as well. Um, in fact, what he didn't say is that there's algorithms that are out there, artificial intelligence, that can guess what your next move, what your thoughts may be, Neil. And, and that's where we get into dangerous sort of dystopian science fiction territory, uh, such as the Minority Report. Uh, are we going to have future crimes here? So, you know, the idea is that all of this could converge uh, with digital identity and we then have an era of absolute and utter control. Now, you said at the start, a lot of people say, well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, it doesn't matter. I've got nothing to hide. The problem is when the governments change the goalposts and suddenly your views today, your biblical views today, Neil, that might be acceptable in the eyes of some, tomorrow don't become acceptable. Tomorrow they might become unlawful. And then what do you do in such a system? That is the concern. And it's been the topic of conversation. Uh, what happens if Christians are considered to be subversive and, uh, you know, an enemy of the state? Uh, thank you so much to Steve for your call. one 800 316 although uh, the time is getting short. We'll see if we can get as many calls in as we can. Nigel is in South Australia. Hey, Nigel, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Uh, just... Uh, very interesting. It's good that this is on air. But I, I saw a news clip, a uh, video clip of uh, the UN. The, um, I need to turn your radio down in the background there, Nigel. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's yep. yeah, got it, mate. And um, saw this uh, news clip on uh, the uh, one of the UN meetings, and they were talking about the big, the big reset, and um, mm. Prince Charles was involved in all that. But whatever. The point I'm trying to make is that. One of the guys under, under Klaus was saying that all we need now, we don't need God anymore. We just need mm -hmm. uh, data, the gathering of data, you know, like all the um, the cloud systems that we've got with Microsoft, Google, you name it. And they said once we accumulate the knowledge, then we have the power to control. And if that's the, um, the ideology of the UN, which is influencing um, even our nations and all other nations, um, how do we combat such an ideology as that, which this could be like the digital is just a one digital identity, just one step further as um, I can't remember the other guy that was talking to you, the interviewing there, sorry, mm. that he was mentioning that um, it will be total control. Like it, it just seems to progress like that, like it has with China and things like that. So that's my take on it. Uh, good thoughts there, Nigel. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts here, George? Uh, this thought well, of, uh, you know, you've got this sort of, it's like mm -hmm. uh, the Great Reset, uh, uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, an exclusive humanist approach, uh, data being the new God. We don't need the God of the Bible. Uh, we just need the data. Uh, your thoughts here for Nigel? Yeah, yeah. Look, Nigel's uh, spot on. Uh, I know exactly what he's talking about. Uh, it is the World Economic Forum, not the United Nations, although they have a very 
close partnership with the United Nations now, so they work towards the same agenda. Uh, the person who made those comments was uh, like the uh, the tech uh, slash spiritual guru to the World Economic Forum. His name is Noah Yuval Harari. And uh, Harari actually did say what was uh, said by Nigel then that, um, you know, we don't need to rely on God anymore. The accumulated amassed information and data from everyone will be the new God. And, um, you know, these are the people who are pushing this system, the digital identity system, again, didn't come from you or me or anyone of the people listening or just about any ordinary everyday Australian, it come from these globalist elites, these people like Harari, who want to develop some new system. And they talk in this language, which is quite bizarre. I mean, creating a new God. Um, uh, so, so you have to be concerned about the origin of this idea that the government, the Australian government, is now implementing. That is what I have to say about all of that. It's a concerning future. It's a dystopian future. And it, but it's a future that the Australian government is going down. Okay, thank you so much to Nigel for your call. And uh, we need to wrap things up. And uh, uh, for those listeners that couldn't get through, let me say uh, apologies for that. You probably had a great point to make, but we might have to talk some more about this in the coming times ahead. Um, we do need to wrap things up. We've got an important conversation just ahead, uh, talking about the laws of war, and I don't want to miss that one. Uh, that's coming up just ahead. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to share your thoughts today with listeners, George Christensen, and I know that there'll be listeners who will want you, to keep up with some of these thoughts. And listeners might know they won't get these sorts of thoughts just anywhere and uh, they will have an opportunity to connect with you. I'm going to give a website and also a way that you can connect by subscription to uh, some uh, regular blogs uh, that are put out by George Christensen. So georgechristensen.com.au is George's website. But you can also subscribe to some daily uh, articles arriving in your inbox nationfirst.substack.com nationfirst.substack.com uh, George, uh, those are the best ways to connect with you. Is there any other ways? Yeah, could I put a plug in for Citizen Go, international organisation, good guys defending life, family and freedom right around the world, including here in Australia, citizengo.org. And what you will find on that website, uh, one of the first petitions, protect your privacy now, stop digital ID. If you're concerned about it, get on the internet now, citizengo.org, go to that petition and sign it. You will be sending a message to the government that you do not want digital identity in our nation, invading our privacy and threatening our freedom. And I think that's the most important message that I've got today. Some action you can take immediately uh, by signing that petition uh, and then find out some more about this. Uh, be forearmed uh, with an understanding of where things are headed. And, of course, incorporating that with what you understand about your Christian faith and whether there is any threat to our Christian faith uh, in a digital age. And I think most of us, having heard this conversation, will agree there certainly is. And that has all sorts of ramifications for the church. Uh, for our privacy, for our freedoms, for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, George Christensen, thank you so much for taking some time to share your thoughts with us today on 2020. Thank you, Neil. God bless you and God bless everyone listening to this uh, radio show. Again, you do a fantastic job talking about these issues here on 2020. Uh, I want to thank you very much for everything that you do. Made it as a ministry. It is uh, a mission that you're on. And it's from God, and may you be blessed, and may Vision FM be blessed, mate.